Hello there. So the nanny state will now be taking another step through the front door of the family home. As per usual, please like, subscribe and comment below. The government has decided that just as with tobacco and alcohol, ordinary people cannot be left to make their own choices or make choices for their children where food is concerned. In fact, children will be conditioned to make the right food choices in life. But the conditioning will come from the state not from the parents. And the first step in that conditioning process is to make sure no child ever sees an ad for foods that are high in fat, sugar or salt. And I doubt this move will stop there. It's more likely a step on the way to full-on food fascism. So we have campaigns to decriminalise drugs while we're intent on stamping out tobacco and alcohol use while now targeting food that doesn't pass the Puritan test. You can imagine in some dim dystopian future, you're on your way to buy a pound of weed from the local supermarket and someone shuffles up to you in the car park and offers you five grams of illicit sugar or salt. And also don't forget the fat acceptance movement and fat pride and their impact on society. Anyway, from January 2023, less than 18 months away, you will not see an ad for any of these HFSS food products before 9pm. And you won't see an ad for them anywhere online in the UK, except in social media accounts, audio-only podcasts and where a company that sells this stuff owns its own website. Anyway... Will this assault on advertising actually make any difference? The government says, To meet our ambition to halve child obesity by 2030, it is imperative we reduce children's exposure to products high in fat, salt and sugar advertising on TV and online. We want to ensure that the media our children engage with the most promotes a healthy diet. And it goes on to say that evidence suggests that exposure to HFSS food advertising can affect what and when children eat, so shaping their eating habits into adulthood. So those adverts, says the government, are lighting the blue touch paper on a future obesity health time bomb. But let's look a bit deeper at what the government's saying. And here's the assumption. We estimate that introducing a watershed across broadcast TV and a restriction for paid-for online advertising could remove up to 7.2 billion calories from children's diets per year in the UK. That sounds very impressive, but let's do the mathematics. Now, there are something like 12.5 million children under 16 in the UK. And if you get your calculator out, that means the new advertising rules would reduce the average child's calorie intake by about 575 calories per annum, or 1.6 calories per day per child. And the recommended daily calorie intake for a healthy child aged 6 to 12 is between 1,600 and 2,200 calories a day. So at the lowest of those intakes, these new rules amount to a 0.1% reduction in calorie intake. Sounds to me like a lot of action and rules to achieve diddly squat. Now there's no getting away from the nation's problem with obesity. The House of Commons Library says in a report that of all four to five year olds, 9.9% are obese. That's 1 in 10. And a further 13.1% are overweight. That's 23% of them in all. 
and if their share of the 7.2 billion calories came out of those overweight and obese four to five year olds diets, it'd still only be a reduction of about six and a half calories a day. And when they get to the 10 to 11 year old stage, 21% are obese and a further 14.1% are overweight. That's over a third of them in all, 35.1%. And when it comes to adults, 28% are obese and a further 36.2% are overweight, 64.2% of the adult population. And then split it down, and that's 68.2% of men and 60.4% of women. A stark set of statistics. And those statistics tell me that it is not young children watching TV ads that are the problem, because parents can say no. But children take their cue from their parents, 64.2% of whom are overweight or obese. Their parents are a living-in-your-face advert to children on how to conduct their lives. And that inevitably includes food consumption, down to what you eat and whether or not you use cutlery. And bear in mind that if providing children with HFSS foods was highly expensive or a chore, or better still both, then it wouldn't happen. But it's not a chore or expensive, far from it. And when the kids see Dad piling the beer in the supermarket trolley next to Mum's chocolate, then screaming for some brightly packed teddy bear adorned sugary breakfast cereal crisps or candy bar, seems quite reasonable. And how many parents are very content to go along with their children's demands to have burger and fries for lunch on the high street? The parents like them just as much if not more than their children do. And there's usually a free kid's toy and no washing up to contend with either. And after a hard day's grind, two very tired parents can be forgiven for opting for a dripping with cheese delivered hot in a box pizza or a tub of finger licking chicken with those ubiquitous fries in preference to gutting a fish, peeling spuds and slicing carrots or microwaving a tasteless, so-called healthy ready meal. No, while the state is trying to avert the eyes of children from ads for fatty foods, cigarettes and drink, those same kids are watching life's advert unfold right before their very eyes, every single day, up close and personal. And I don't think that's something that a bit of ad banning will overcome. So we might find this being the first of many steps to a future where certain foods are treated in the same way we treat tobacco and alcohol today. Then we'll need something else to target. Enforced daily exercise maybe? Chinese style? Moving on. So you're looking forward to booking a holiday for fun sea and sangria only to read today that Misery Merkel and Morose Macron have called for all Brits going to the EU to be quarantined, despite the UK vax rollout success. So if you had your jibby-jab jumbo in order to go on your holes in Europe, well I'm afraid that teacher's pet Emmanuel Macron and that illustrious German leader may have just put an end to it. Yes, that's right folks. Being double poked by the unquestionably safe you-know-what won't give you the automatic right to travel around Europe without quarantine. No, I'm afraid you'll have to look a little closer to home for a bit of sun, sea and social distancing, because our friends across the channel in mainland Europe don't like you because you're a xenophobic Brit who voted against their superstate. Um, sorry because you may carry the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Square Root variant of Type B COVID-24 caught from a bat's uncle's sneezing fit. And here's a little snippet of news for you.
According to The Telegraph, Harry and Meghan turned down the title of Earl of Dumbarton for their son Archie because it had the word dumb in it. But Andrew Neil of GB News tweeted, Surely this can't be true. And if it is, should they not be grateful? It could have been Lord Scunthorpe. That's very naughty, Andrew. Very, very naughty. So what's your opinion on food and the nanny state? Please like and comment below.